the Joe Rogan experience. It brings us back to haters. Yeah. They can, can get inspiration from people. You get, you get juice. Yo, shouts out to that lady who's Emmy nominated that hates me. God bless <laughs> God bless your soul, woman. Oh. I had never thought about winning an Emmy in my life, but because you hated on me when I got... And she hates me for the most ridiculous reason. God bless her soul. She hates me just because I'm not a Democrat, Nick Dubois. You know what I mean? Uh, like, like I've had Democrats I like and I push for them, especially yes. locally. But I'm sorry, lady. I can't be a Dubois. And God bless me to fuck around and get rich. I really, I, I don't take money from any politicians or political party. So if you see me stand next to someone, it's because I really believe. Um, and if they don't convince me to believe, I'm not going to stand next to them, yeah. right? She wanted me to stand next to somebody. I'm like, you know, sorry, lady. I've, I've had some conversations with her. You know, I've just, I've tried my best, but I'm not hating, but it's just that ain't my thing. But this chick was just like, I'm going to use my platform to, and I'm like, you don't really have a platform? Yeah. But she, in her bio, she's an Emmy nominated actress. Mm. Man, winning that Emmy sure felt good. Uh. I just, I, I blocked her, but I'm sure someone has told her. But I'm just like, holding it, I hope she sees the picture. Like, yeah, thank God for your hate, lady, because it made me care. I went to the I went to the ceremonies and walked away with a trophy. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. And to her, there was a study that was done recently about left wing authoritarianism and yeah. the, the way certain people behave, and that yeah. it's just it, it's like a bunch of different psychological conditions that are they're almost indistinguishable. Yeah, from like you know like horrible narcissism. Hor- horrible, uh, so- uh, like psychotic behavior. Like, see if yeah. you could find it. What what their conclusions were. But what? at the fringes, yeah. when people, what what happens is when you have groups that are ideo- ideological ju- groups, whether it's the left or the right. Yeah, you're gonna get people that just join that group that are absolutely insane. Yeah, and if you don't call it out then you have a giant problem because people are going to associate you with whatever the worst aspects of exactly. your, yeah. like, right-wing Proud Boys, like yeah, that yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, shit. Yeah. The experts somehow overlooked authoritarians on the left. Many psychologists wrongly assume that coercive attitudes exist only among conservatives. Of course, it's a I, human characteristic. I did a, a speech for FIRE, for the organization FIRE, and I, I missaid, I'm sorry, the brown shirts of Italy, but I, what I meant was the brown shirts of Germany, that... As the as the left, as you accomplish more power politically, don't use it as a bludgeon in the same way you've perceived it to be used against you. Right. That you you have to you have to rule quote unquote in a in a in a in a more fair and equitable way. You can't let your fair and, and equitable thoughts become totalitarian. Yeah, you, know and you also can't give in to this crazy instinct that we all humans have to be tribal. Yes. And I am a Democrat. I am a lifelong blue no matter yeah, who. Yeah, 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 you yeah. can't, yeah. that's not and that, and wise. That's, that's both, yeah, it's both sides, but we tell yes. like, I grew both up, I was sides. fortunate enough to grow up in a household where my grandmother was SCLC member had from Tuskegee, had been a part, born in 1932, had been a part of civil rights stuff. My grandfather, so my grandmother grew up on a farm could go to school. They weren't wealthy, but they had food. They had sustenance. They had education. My grandfather grew up working in a sawmill at eight years old because his father abandoned his family. and He had to feed his mothers and sisters. So his mentality was much more libertarian, I would say. His mentality was if God gave you an appetite and a mind to build a fishing rod, you should be able to catch fish. And my grandmother mm. was like, you shouldn't complain about having to buy a fishing license because the game warden has to make sure things are legit and somebody has to clean up the park. So I got a chance to see these wonderful mm. political arguments between these two people that loved each other. You mm. know, my grandmother, college-educated woman. My grandfather drove a truck and, and hauled moonshine and gambled. You know what I mean? Yeah. He married this God-fearing woman. He never, I never saw him walk in the church. But they had these great debates that showed me that there are no absolutes. That there are going to be some things from each side that make sense yeah. to run a, a good household. And they kind of, they, I, I watched them just do it right. You know what I'm saying? And I just, I'm glad I saw that because I don't feel married to any ideology. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's important. Shouts out to Betty and Willie. God bless the dead, man. Yeah, getting uh, attached to ideologies is always a bad idea, uh, particularly when you do, we, like human beings have in America, have two choices. Yeah, you have two choices: you yeah. have the left and the right. And, like, and people just like they adhere. They adhere to whatever this side's yeah. doing because they want them to win. Yeah. And then you have some weird problematic figures like Trump who comes along. Yeah. And like the there's a lot of never Trumper Republicans. Yeah, yeah. They don't know what to do. It's yeah. Like, but I, I say in this crazy ass country, pay attention to the people who have 
no chance of winning sometimes because they're going to they're going to be some truths told. Like no matter what you feel about Trump, there was a moment in that debate. Chappelle talks about it when Trump said, "Of course these loopholes exist. They exist." He was talking to Hillary. Yeah. Like hell yeah, I'm gonna take it advantage of the loophole. Yeah. Because they they also exist for the people who doing in your campaign. I was like, yeah. Finally. Yes. A, a member of the oligarchy class says, yeah, motherfucker, we're cheating. Yeah. And I was just like, I was like, that, at that point, Americans should have said hard reset. Yeah. Like they literally should have said pre Eisenhower, hard reset. We're going to re- we're going to reform all this shit. The money's going to work different. Federal. N- none of us said a goddamn thing. And you know why? Because because we're all compl- we're all complacent in some capacity. We're all a company. In this in this grand scheme that's fucking us over, and yeah. in, and in, and and if you don't have an educated constituency of proletariat, it's it's all just going to kind of reform. So like doing this election, people are like, who are you supporting? And I was like, I don't give a fuck nationally. I give a fuck that Cornell West is in the race because I'm interested to see what he's going to say. Kennedy, I'm interested just to hear you know whatever crazy shit people think he's um, whoever else is running. I'm just interested because. The two parties we know we got, but there are all these little voices that pop up, mm-hmm. that little grains of truth. They stand no chance of winning in some cases. But let me just take a grain of what you're saying, and, and yeah. that way I'll know what to take back to, to the party that wins and say, hey, what about this? Mm-hmm. What? Why do we have money for this, but we don't have money for yeah. this? You know, Like Sanders, people told me, like, Mike, you're a business guy. You like money. Sanders even said, hey, I think you're going to be a billionaire. I'm going to tax the shit out of you, too. We were laughing and joking backstage at the Amazon worker strike that we were both supporting. But... My thing is, I don't want to pay the government more taxes, but if I got to pay more taxes, let me pay what the guy's plan who's going to educate kids and trades and scholarship for free. Because yes. that way I'm making a 20-year investment so that my 16-year-old daughter, when she's 36, has a much better country full of educated kids versus yes. I bought a lot, I bought more missiles. You know yes. what I'm saying? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, that's possible. But the if idea you, but, that but, that's but, not but, possible But if crazy. you don't put them in now— I am a millionaire. I'm going to do my best to protect my fucking money. Yeah. Because I wasn't born a millionaire. You know what I mean? I was born just a working cash black kid named Michael. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and Michael had to, Michael never liked working at Six Flags or AutoZone <laughs> or UPS. So once Michael <laughs> fucked around to figure out how to sing and dance and make some money, Michael wants to save yeah. more of his money than spend, you know? 